playing flat, okay? Guys, so we're gonna do, go back to Toriando style passing. When we're doing Toriando style passing, when we're in front of his guard, this is under the impression that we have not let him establish any grips, okay? So in the event that, let's say he grabs my ankle, okay? We need to always come back here to do Toriando style passing, okay? Or else we're gonna have to do something else, all right? So, to lessen the chance of him making grips, we're gonna start in our normal stagger stance, just like we would do if we were, you know, playing on the feet, okay? And we're gonna make sure we stay behind the line of his feet, okay? We're gonna make contact with our hands on the shins, right below the knees. And we're gonna make sure we're putting pressure through our foot and through these posts into his shins, okay? Too low and no pressure, Ulysses is gonna move around super easy here. We don't want that, okay? So I'm making some pressure here, okay? This is gonna be the first drill, guys. And you can go slow at first if you need to, but eventually I want you to make this a fluid drill, okay? We're gonna work, work on our footwork here. So the idea is that as soon as I make contact here, I'm gonna be moving immediately, okay? So, if I'm doing it the slow way, I'm putting pressure into the middle of the shins here with straight elbows, okay? I'm taking a lateral step. As soon as I take a lateral step, I'm taking a cross step, and I'm spinning to get away from his defense and his guard retention, okay? Now, if we're doing that fast, okay, after a few reps, as soon as you touch, it's a rapid fire sequence of all those details. Don't wait, okay? So it's touch, step, cross, spin. Make sense? We're having a little bit of trouble, A, making space, and B, just like kind of having brain parts here, waiting a little bit too long, okay? So again, slow, it's shins, side step, cross step, rotate, okay? As soon as you get comfortable with that, it's touch, step, cross step, spin. Again, since we are in the gi now, I'm gonna strongly recommend that we're using gi grips for, for this. Anywhere on the inside from the knees to the ankles, okay? So, as soon as we make our grips here, okay? I'm pushing the knees in, I'm lateral stepping, I'm cross stepping, and I'm pivoting towards the head, okay? As soon as you grab the pants, it should be like a, you know, like a song. Those are the steps, those are the notes. Note by note, right? So we're here, I come in, as soon as I grab the pants, forward, lateral step, cross step, pivot towards the head. Make sense? Any questions? All right, cool, let's go, partner. When we touch and go here, we can go a little bit slower to get our partner used to this too. I'm gonna make that side step, as I step through, Matt's gonna slide his hips and follow me to face. As he does that, I'm gonna step out, step across, and go to the other side, okay? So, one more time. We're here, I go to step in, he follows me, I step across, I go to the other side. That makes sense? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do this, and he's coming to face me from here. As I cross step, I can think about throwing the legs the other way. Make sense? Okay. Um, it doesn't matter what grips you use, okay? In the moment, however you find your hands here, to bring the legs to this side. Okay, there's numerous different ways to do it. Okay, if it was the gi, I would just keep my pant grips, all right? So, uh, for the remainder of the, amount, or the remainder of the round, let's uh, keep that uh, fresh in our heads, okay? We have the movement down with our feet, now let's add the hands, okay? So we're here, I go to step across, as I step to the other side, I throw the legs out of the way. Because you saw earlier, when I was doing a little bit slower, Matt was able to follow me a little bit easier. So if I throw those legs by, it's gonna give me a little extra time to cross step to the other side. You guys understand? All right, cool, let's go. So, when I make my lateral step, I step to the side and I feel like he's gonna face me. Okay, go ahead. As long as this foot's on the outside of his hips, I have the means to step across, okay? So as Ramiro's facing me, I'm gonna step across and I'm just gonna pivot to the other side, okay? It's a little bit faster, okay? We're here, I step out. As I'm going, he's going to face me. I step to the other side. Now, let's talk about what you should be doing with your hands here, okay? Whenever we Toriando, your head's going one way, your hands are going the opposite way of the pass, typically, okay? So especially in Nogi, you gotta be throwing these legs wide. This, today it's gonna be a little bit easier with grips. It's pretty intuitive, right? So, watch my hands on this one, slow. I step to the side, I step across, he faces me. When I step across, I move his legs to the other side. Make sense? All right, cool. Let's 
see that? Can you see this? No, good. Alright, so here, here, he pushes me away. Okay, like kind of strong guy guard attention, right? One, two, shoulder down, hip down, okay? It's okay to go to your knee first, but as soon as you get to your knee, try to get to your hip right away, okay? One, two, S grip. Why an S grip and not a gable grip? Sometimes it's gonna be harder to crawl this hand through, so S grip is a good solution for that. It's also gonna make this lever longer, so you have a bigger lever to push into the shoulder, okay? All right, so we're here. I'm drawing up to my toes so I can actually walk. If I don't do that, Matt's gonna be able to turn into me a lot easier. Yeah, so watch. Yeah, see, that helps me push my hip into his hip like a shovel. Okay, let go, underhook, and then we'll finish our pass. Make sense? Guys, make sure when you finish, you're getting fully perpendicular to your partner so this arm shelf up too. All right? Cool. Let's go. Same thing. I engage, I lateral step, I cross step over right here. Okay, in the event that Ramiro is staying flat and he ever drops his legs, this is typically going to happen if you get so far north south and you're far away from the guard retention, okay? Or your partner's bigger, they're not as flexible. Okay? They can't do stuff like that on one try to face. A lot of times they'll drop their legs, hip escape, and go to push away with their arms too. Yeah, okay. that's the idea. So for this particular scenario to give us, you know, the full scope of problems here, as I step to the side, Ramiro's going to bring his legs down. He's going to frame on my shoulders, okay, to push me away. As this is happening, I'm going to let go of the pants. I'm going to go between the biceps. I'm going to drop my knee, drop my hip, and settle across his hips here, okay? Technically, in a point rule set, this is a guard pass, but this isn't a great position to go for submissions or necessarily advance yet, okay? So we're gonna do some work here. Guys, right off the bat here, especially if you're smaller, do not start bringing your hips off the ground above your head. You're gonna get off balance this way or even roll over against something big and strong. Keep your hips on the ground, okay? From here, a lot of times, since this frame's really tight, it's gonna be super hard to get another one, especially so we're going to go on top here first, but palm facing up, okay? My other hand is going to go through and around the head. Guys, remember if Ramiro's pushing super hard here, you're like, man, I just can't get my arm through. Instead of bringing it through right away, draw your elbow back so the post goes dead, and then bring it through, okay? Now from here, we'll lock in an S grip. We're using this S grip here to push against his bottom shoulder so he doesn't turn towards me to recover his guard make underhooks, you know, stuff of that nature. Like, typical side control escapes, okay? So, for example, if Ramiro starts to turn to his side, go ahead. Yeah, I don't want that to happen. So I'm specifically using this grip to keep his shoulder to the mat. Come up now. See, it's a lot harder, okay? Now from here, we're gonna look to get side control. Watch my feet. I'm gonna go active toes. Now my hip is gonna shovel into his hip to make his hips turn. I'm gonna drop to my knees. Let go of this grip, get my underhook, and then walk up to a tight perpendicular side control. Remember your top knee should be on the outside of your elbow so that your shoulder is aligned with the face and we have good chest to chest pressure. Okay, one more time. Why do I go to knee on belly here, okay? If I feel like I'm gonna go for that first one and just try to drop on him and I see that his knee is past my knee or like in the line with my knee, it's not the time to just drop for side control, okay? You're just gonna land right on his legs. He's probably gonna extend you off and you're gonna end up in the back in some form of guard, okay? So, from here, it's not a bad idea to wedge almost preemptively the shin bone into the hip, okay? We're not gonna do a traditional knee on belly. We're not looking to do the knee on belly we all learned from our old instructor where we go here and you know, we grab his imaginary pants and, you know. <laughs> Time and place for that, okay? I don't know if it's ever going to be my time, so I'm not there too much. 300 pounds. Right? Okay. So instead of doing that, coming up, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to get low. So I'm actually going to put my hands on the mat. This is going to be almost a derivative of uh, what we call float passing, where our weights into our hands, okay? Mm -hmm. To eliminate the leg lock space, I'm going to go to a triangle here, okay? If you can't triangle, you're just going to keep your knee close to your foot like we did on the back, okay? So you're going to be here. Okay. Now, this is pretty good. It's going to be hard for him to push my legs back into a quarter guard, okay, stuff like that. Leg locks, since there's no space between my legs, it's pretty outside the realm of possibility. 
The one thing you guys are going to have to deal with here is people like bridging super hard. Okay? So this is going to highlight some of the principles of like almost a float pass style of position. Okay? When Ulysses goes to bridge up, okay, I'm not going to resist super hard here because if he keeps bridging, if my weight's not into my hands, I'm going to fall off. Okay? So what you guys aren't seeing is when he bridges, I'm pressing into my hands, almost like at the beginning of the drill when I was pressing into the shins. But instead of the shins, now I'm doing it to the floor, okay? So when he goes to bridge, I'm going to have my hands heavy and my legs light, okay? Go ahead. Go ahead, push me off. So you see, it's like I'm surfing him, okay? If you start to open your legs here, that's when, yeah, you could possibly catch a quarter guard or something like that, all right? All right. You're going to have to emphasize that way more, okay? It's just, you know, the way it goes. Now, <clears throat> once he stops with that physical output, okay, there's a million different ways you can finish here. Okay, we could take the bat, we could go to a regular knee on belly, we could go to mount, we could go to submissions, okay, but we're going to keep this uniform with the last pass. We're actually going to finish the same way. You guys see how Grant's pushing right now? He's doing the right thing, he has a frame on my hips. So if I go to mount here, he's going to push that leg right through immediately, and he's going to catch me in half row, okay? So when I feel him do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start settling the triangle to this side, underhooking the head, bringing this hand over, and locking that same frame we used last time. From here, all I'm going to do is bring my knee to the ground and immediately turn my hip so he doesn't recover his guard, okay? Now all the steps are the same. I'm walking back, switching to my knees, Getting my underhook, and again, walking my knees up for side control, okay? Going to different guards here. This is actually one setup we looked at during the, uh, 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 the leg locks we did over the summer, okay? You know, we're here and we stay here. People can enter into 50-50, okay? People can enter into saddle, okay? Lots of different stuff. So you need to be mindful of that. And your mindful of that, mindfulness of that is going to be when Ramiro's stepping through here and I'm going to bring my legs up, he needs to grab my legs and control my legs so that I can't do things like that, okay? Uh, those are going to be more so for Nogi, so can we switch spots? In the event that we're doing Nogi and like, you know, leg locks are a little more prevalent in the gi, if I do feel him like start to brace and bring his legs up, Guys, that's when we're going back to those V grips we use all the time, okay? Especially if we're looking to go north-south and potentially even finish passes north-south, okay? You know, we're always pushing like this, right? So, again, if you're ever here and you feel them start to come in with their legs, make sure you're controlling them. That's it. Make sense? All right, cool. So this already happened to a few of you, okay? As you're entering into the Toriando or the Neon Belly, okay? Um, Ramiro is going to look to drop this knee for a few different specific reasons. Not away from him, but more so like this time, he's actually going to rotate towards me. Yes. Okay. This is way more acceptable than dropping your feet, and this is a bigger problem, okay? Which is going to be like all of next week's techniques, okay? However, before he solidifies that position, I do have an opportunity to get him in another control position, okay? So as I connect to knee on belly and that knee drops, okay, we can look, drop your knee, to slide this knee in, okay? Now, when we slide this knee in, we're just pinning this bottom leg, okay? So when we pin this bottom leg, our staple needs to be right above the knee, okay? Not on the knee, not below the knee, okay? So watch this. On the testicle? On the, on the left one. <laughs> Middle one that they got. Right. So here, watch. Looks the same, right? From here, I'll pull your leg Yeah. Even the on his knee, okay? Root, painful, but the same thing. Pull your leg out. Yeah. Now, above the knee, pull your leg out. See, that's what actually staples his leg. So that cut needs to be right above the knee. Okay? It's like an inverted knee slice, right? So, one more time. A little slow here. I step to the side, I cross up, he's turning in right there. It's like a penetration step. One, two, 
Get your legs close together right away, okay? We are starting low for this pass, so we're going to be controlling the hips right away, okay? Same thing when he frames, or even if he doesn't, we're going to do the same things with the hands, okay? If I can't bring this through, it's too tight here, I'll draw the elbow back and then shoot it through, okay? One, and then I'll start working this hand through for two. In the shoulder, okay? Now, you need to get this leg off without giving up position, right? So watch. I'm going to take this knee here, I'm going to walk it in, almost like I'm scooping his knee with it. And I'm just going to take this leg off and again turn my hips. And we're going to finish the exact same way we did last time. Make sense? Okay, one more time. My position. Sherman's going to turn towards me and start to dip this knee to the mat to try to recompose some sort of guard. So when I see this angle, watch my knee. It's going to be like a reverse knee cut. All I'm going to do is slide this knee across above his knee and drop my elbow and pin this bottom leg. Okay. This pin needs to be above the knee. If you go below the knee, okay, pull your knee out. Okay, see, it's a good staple. If I go below the knee, pull your knee out. See, it just comes right up. Okay. So, knee on belly. Sherman starts turning towards me. I slide my knee right above his knee and I drop my elbow. Okay. From here, okay. Somebody good, again, they're going to start using their hands. They're going to start pushing. I don't turn that way. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. So same thing we've been doing. One, two, get our grip here, okay? Guys, now watch my legs. This is gonna be a short but precise movement. If you can't see, you need to come this way, okay? I'm gonna start walking this leg back towards my other leg and I'm gonna rotate my hips and just kick this leg off and drop back to this hip and then start walking. Get the underhook and then same as last time, finish side control, okay? This one's not as big of a movement, but the movements are very particular for uh, the normal side control thing to do, okay? However, okay, especially if you think back to our classes where we did like chair sit back takes, this is a good thing, okay? So in this situation, we can be like, okay, just keep your arm there, walk up, get here, good, good head pressure, and we can use anything from our hips to our chest to keep a frame on this arm. Use the underhook hand and start attacking the wrist and then start feeding. And then, you know, step over, sit him up, okay? However you want to attack the back, okay? So it's not a terrible thing if that happens. Make sense?